Greetings. Welcome to the Bank Beat Quick Takes video blog. We're pleased to have two very interesting guests with us who will help us have a conversation about what bankers can do to grow their business. I'm Tom Bankston, the publisher of Bank Beat and Bank News Magazines, as well as the bankbeat.biz industry news website. Thank you very much for being with us. Our guests are Melissa Marcel, Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of West Town Bank and Trust in Raleigh, North Carolina, and Justin Fisher, Co-Founder and CEO of Risk Scout, which helps banks address compliance issues surrounding the service of high-risk businesses. Melissa, Justin, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having us, Tom. Glad thank to Tom. be here. We know how important it is to grow. Given all the market pressures, a bank really needs to grow uh, simply in order to remain viable. But with loan demand tepid in many parts of the country, growth can be hard to come by. Some banks you know, look at mergers and acquisitions as a source of growth, but clearly that's not a solution for everyone. Melissa, you were struggling with challenges to grow a couple of years back and your bank made a strategic decision to serve some new kinds of businesses which have resulted in remarkable growth. Tell us a little bit about your experience at West Town Bank. Yeah, thanks, Tom. We were, we were challenged like every other bank is, running after the same type of business. And we decided to take a look at some of these new emerging markets. Um, everybody has a different terminology for them. We call them emerging markets, underserved markets. Um, in the banking world, they're considered high risk markets. However, we, we have done the analysis on them, we bank them openly, and we have found them to be a really good source of deposits. And we have also done some lending in the areas. Um, our bank is a huge guaranteed government lending organization. So we have been able in the hemp space to provide some funding in that with SBA and USDA. But for us, it really gave us a unique deposit funding source for our already established loan growth. And you mentioned hemp. Um, so was that the focus of your new business or were there other businesses in that group as well? Initially, it was hemp. So, you know, with the passage of 2018 Farm Bill and, and you know, we're, we're an Illinois chartered bank. However, our headquarters for our holding company is in Raleigh, North Carolina. So farming and hemp are near and dear to us. So we decided to grab hold of that market and to go after it. And we, we've not looked back. It's an incredible market and we love it. And we are We've seen a shift recently into the industrial hemp market, which I think is bringing the farming back, industrial and hemp, and so it aligns perfectly with our mission. Serving a new type of business often starts with the deposit relationship, as you mentioned. Bankers know the complications surrounding Bank Secrecy Act, the Know Your Customer Rules when opening new accounts. How have you handled some of those compliance issues? Again, writing a program and understanding it. So that's what it's all about. There's a huge misnomer in the industry that we can't bank it. You know, there, there is, again, the Safe Banking Act lurking in the background, but that, that does not preclude you from banking this industry. You need to understand what you're banking and knowing your customers like any other industry. You need to know what they're doing. You need to understand the industry. You need to know what the businesses are providing, where the income, what the funds coming into the bank. So we took a very deep dive into the industry. We showed up at conferences. We, you know, we partnered with Risk Scout. We went on site to different locations and we really learned this business. And that's what it's all about, knowing your customer. And we have been able to do that. And, and our partnership with Risk Scout has given us the ability to scale this on a larger basis. Because again, trying to do this in a back office by adding one more staff or one more staff to look at documentation or the things that come along with BSA and AML and know your customer could be daunting. Again, you just need to have a place to house all this information, look at all this information, study this information. And again, it, it really is that simple. Do you know your customer and what they're doing? Justin, your company was set up to help companies, help banks deal with the risk of establishing new relationship with businesses that carry what might be considered a higher degree of risk. I know you have a technology background. Tell us a little bit about Risk Scout and why you started this business and how you got to where we are today. 
Yeah, so I have uh, about 21 years, uh, not only building software for most CFIs in the country, but I've also worked on the on the very high end money center bank side as well. Um, but um, I'm also a fourth generation farmer. My family uh, comes from a farming um, community down in South Texas. My dad is actually retiring from construction and going back to grow hemp on his farm. He has a 30 year relationship with his bank in that small town and that bank is going to kick him out. Sight unseen, um, and they may they know him, but sight unseen, they hear the word hemp, he's out. So I have a little bit of a personal connection to it as well and something that drives me. But you know, um, after working in the online banking and um, you know, also just working with, with banks all across the country doing hundreds of back office projects, I've seen a lot of the inefficiencies and the challenges you can have, even with the best core you know, out there, um, I'm hearing banks under a billion dollars are, are getting 13 to 14 month timelines quoted back from their core. It's very difficult to do these kind of projects and to get efficiency if, you know, you have to do it manually or you're struggling with your technology providers. So when Risk Out, um, you know, was born was essentially going to some of these conferences and hearing about, you know, these banks who were having great success with emerging markets. A lot of it in the early days was THC in certain states and hemp, but you know, we have traditionals like ATMs and MSBs, cryptocurrency is the next one, online gaming is very popular, but these markets are very underbanked. Um, you know, one of the things that we saw is that, you know, we, we saw an institution actually had 16 temps hired in a room that were just going through paperwork. If you've been in banking and it sounds like you have for a long time, right? You know, you know that sounds like the old mortgage process that we all used to do back or, you know, mortgage uh, cycles. And so, you know, that's a technology problem that uh, that's a tech, a problem that can be solved with technology, right? We can do that online. We can automate that process. We can get the human decisioning that can still happen, but do it in a way that you can handle, you know, hundreds of applications a day instead of one or two that come through a branch. So, you know, I think the biggest thing for us is we saw that traditional banking wasn't helping, um, you know, traditional basically branch-based banking wasn't helping institutions grow. And we could come in with technology that was built by compliance officers to open up the onboarding, the verification, and the ongoing compliance to make this happen. And, and can you tell us a little more about exactly how your company works? What is the product delivery, uh, software, internet-based? Mm -hmm. Is there training involved face-to-face? -face? How, how does it work? Yeah. yeah, great question. First thing we do uh, is educate. So not every institution is interested in THC or is in a THC state. Not every interest, institution wants to do him. Most institutions already see check cashers and money money service businesses in their own backyard. By the way, hemp is 100% legal federally. It's in every state. It's in every backyard. CBD, you'll see everywhere. But essentially, depending on what an institution wants to do, we start with the conversation. We do some checkup on their compliance and their risk tolerances and where they're at. Um, because really, you know, Tom, we want to do an honest review of where their resources are at, what they might need to do, which markets they want to seek. Um, and, and just educate overall, because there's a lot of challenges and we can go into that. Once we do that, then it's pretty clear around what, what pieces of their compliance program need to be modified and automated. And once we, what we do with that is we then snap those in to essentially a virtual branch software solution. So it's a cloud-based solution that allows a URL for the institution to send out branded for the institution. And then the customer can engage just like mortgages happening today. You can do it. I did a mortgage on my phone six months ago, you know, completely on my phone, turned it to the side and signed it and everything, you know, what, never had to walk into the office. Oh, they need a tax form. Okay, here, I'll upload that tax form. I'll take a picture of it. Right. That's the world we're living in. And it's super efficient. Um, one of the things Melissa saw as well, and we see this a lot is when you open up a program, there's so many great businesses, but you may not want to bank some of these businesses, you know, so you might want to be in the industry for say cultivators and farmers, but maybe not the smoke shop that's in the, you know, the east side of town. Well, it's hard to filter those because you're getting thousands of requests, you know, to bank this uh, nationwide. How do you, how do you do that? So our tools, you know, jump in and do that with the help of, um, you know, your BSA officer, your treasury management officer, who's running the levers behind the scenes. And then what's different about this industry is there's a lot of communication going back and forth. So, Hey, send me a picture of your field, or I need a, you know, a, a copy of your license. And that's where Risk Out can automate all that through, you know, online secure file transfers and communication, which should be where we all are today in the, in, in the banking world, but we just aren't quite there. You know, I think about the closest equivalent we have is probably secure messages and online banking, you know, to communicating to a customer in real time. Otherwise, it's, you know, it's, it's a telephone or a branch visit. Melissa, tell us a little bit about how all this played out at your bank. Um, how about the, the, the folks working in the bank? Did, was there a e quick acceptance of this? Was there a lot of training involved? Just tell us a little bit about what it was like. 
it, it, it went really well, Tom. We, we were able to, our, our bank is, prides ourselves in acting fast, but also doing all the diligence and the homework that's required. So I have an incredible compliance team, an incredible treasury management team. We literally got into a room and said, do we want to do this? Let's do a true risk assessment. Let's make sure we're all in on this. The board of directors was all in. Our executive management was all in. And by the time we got done, we, we looked at each other and said, although this is deemed high risk, this is really not that high risk. We can mitigate these risks. We can do this. Everybody got excited around it. We, we engaged with, with Justin and Risk Out early on. They took a look at our plans, helped us with our compliance program, helped us with our risk assessments. And then we took all of that and engaged with them to open up the platform to put all of this in here. And, and again, it's been great. They, they've, they've been great partners because the training is, is very you know, closely held and we have been able to say, hey, this didn't work. Let's, let's see if we can do something different. You don't get that with large cores or a lot of big providers. So the partnership there has been amazing. But yes, our staff and Risk Scout and the whole engagement has been incredible. And I would say it, it does not require a huge lift if an organization wants to get into this. You mentioned the board, the executive leadership level of the bank. What was it like as you prepared to go to them with this idea? We now want to bank hemp businesses. I mean, was did that make you a little nervous? And or how did you prepare for that? It did, but we we had we had continually talked about it. We have an incredible board and an incredible executive management team, and we continually talk strategically. So, you know, they weren't prepared. I didn't go in there sight unseen to say, hey, we're gonna do this. We had mentioned it several times and they knew we were studying it. They knew we were doing conferences. The president CEO and our legal counsel actually went on site to a farm to go look at what they were doing. So we, we really had, we engaged ourselves and knew what we were doing. So, you know, being prepared and just walking in there and saying, this is all that we've done. This is all that we know. We can safely bank this and it's going to give us an incredible deposit base that we would otherwise not have. So, you know, for us, it went well. And again, we engaged our regulators early and often. That also makes a tremendous difference as well. And Tom, uh, can I can I add something there? Um, I re really want to stress this. Um, every institution in, in the United States is actually banking these businesses, right? So that's a little bit of a misnomer to say, you know, how do you go into this? They're actually already banking them. We actually find We've had conversations multiple times where treasury management didn't know that they were banking and the BSA officer absolutely knew. And it turned out it was the nephew of the board or it was a high net value customer they had an exception for. What happens is, is um, they'll find them and then you have to make a decision. And if it's against your policy, then you've got to kick them out. And that can be very rough with, you know, someone like my dad has been there for 30 years or someone who's a charter member of the, of the institution. Right. And so it's an important um, I actually just recently heard about a guy who got, um, you know, potentially uh, or was being threatened to be kicked out because he was a high net uh, real estate commercial uh, developer. But he had a CBD store in one of his mm -hmm. strip centers. And so the line is very difficult in terms of where it's drawn, but it's very clear that everyone is banking these businesses. They may not have a you know, fully fledged program like Melissa, and that's a dangerous place to be, especially if you make exceptions because the examiners will come down on you pretty hard for that. I appreciate that. I think that's, uh, that's a really insightful comment. Thank you for that. Um, both of you mentioned uh, just briefly about the core that every bank has. So Risk Scout, is there some sort of API that connects it with the core? Or how, what is, how does that work? Yeah, so depending on the level of markets we're working with, um, you know, the good news about us, and I lived in a world, uh, we used to work for Q2, we did a lot of integrations. In fact, I've integrated with every core out there and, uh, and seen about 500 core conversions myself. So got a lot of uh, PTSD from that, uh, Tom. But the, um, the, the, key, the key for us is we don't actually integrate where we don't have to. So we don't have to go through those long cycles with the core. We can take batch files for transaction data and we take that data in and we can compare it for monitoring purposes. A lot of what's happening on the money laundering front is, you know, like I have a bank in uh, Oklahoma, for example, this, these, these dispensaries in Oklahoma never had banking prior to this bank. So they might have half a million dollars stacked up in 100, 100 sacks cash and they would take it and dump it into their, their Brinks deposit. And then the institution would say, wait a minute, you only do about half a million in sales. How do you have a million dollars in deposits? And that's potentially money laundering until that's source of the funds and the, you know, that's, you know, re research essentially. So that's something that we catch in our process. And, um, but all those things only require batch files. And um, that makes it really nice in terms of our implementation is honestly, you know, truly, honestly, only four weeks to, to get someone uh, online and in a new market. 
So we don't have to deal with a lot of that baggage. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, let's quickly talk about cryptocurrencies. A lot of banks, bankers are trying to figure out what should our role be in, in this business, the digital currency world? Do we have a place in that arena? Um, can Risk Scout help a bank make a decision about getting involved with crypto and digital currencies? Absolutely. Uh, if you go to our website, we have a webinar next uh, next week or so. Uh, hopefully, you don't mind the shameless plug. Um, but where it's all education based, won't be sales based. We talk about cryptocurrency. Um, there's just two ways to think about cryptocurrency right now. Uh, one way is uh, most institutions are thinking about their high net individuals or, or individual consumer level who wants to see a wallet next to the bank account. That's a lot of what you're seeing today in cryptocurrency, where institutions are reaching out to certain vendors and, and creating sort of a, a wallet or transferability. Um, another way in a place where we play a lot in, um, you know, to enable businesses, there are crypto businesses behind all of this industry. So they're mining crypto, they're uh, fintechs that are doing in interesting crypto things. There's all kinds. There's a payroll company doing crypto. You know, there's a massive main, uh, uh, group of businesses that can't get banked because as soon as they say crypto, a bank says, oh, that's dark web or, you know, that's ransomware. I don't want anything to do with that. Don't know how to track it. And that's where we can come in and help set a policy, um, you know, and, and work through that and then how to approach that market and, and bring those new businesses in. Well, we're running up against our time limit. I can't believe how quickly our time goes, but we do kind of need to bring this to a close. Do either of you have any closing thoughts that you want to share um, and uh, make sure we share with our listeners? I, I would just add, Tom, that, you know, per Justin's point, and it's going to get to this point in crypto and any other kind of emerging markets, we're banking it. So let's just knowingly bank it. Let's have a program. Let's partner with people like Risk Scout so we can do it the right way and the correct way. And as financial institutions, it is our responsibility to safely bank and get money moving through the system and to, to, to not, you know, make it where we're hiding, you know, where the money's in coming into the banks or worse than that not letting money come into the financial institutions. So, you know, I, th I think we really need to take a deep dive and look at that. Justin, yeah, and I would just, yeah, I would just add that I've been in this industry for, you know, almost uh, over two decades. I've seen money center banks found in the, you know, community financial banks, you know, they're spending more in technology. You now have FinTechs, you know, Chimes and Acorns of the world who are threatening community banks. You know, and then you've got growth that's stagnant based off of the tech providers. And you mentioned the, the loan issues, right? So you've got all these challenges and pressures. Um, my recommendation would be you've got that on one side and you've got great business owners in your own community who are looking for banking. Sounds like a really great opportunity for community institutions to see growth and to help, you know, solve a problem in their, in their community. Melissa Marcel, Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of West Town Bank, and Justin Fisher, Co-Founder and CEO of Risk Scout. Thank you very much for the conversation. Thanks to all of you who have joined us to watch this video. I'm Tom Bankston, publisher of the industry news website, bankbeat.biz. This has been another Bank Beat Quick Takes video blog.